It's the nation's favourite antiques expert. Yeah! Super cool. How about that? Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners... Yes! ..and valiant losers. Blast it! Will it be the high road to glory... <laughs> ..or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> we are about to witness the genesis of a brand-new road trip to some. How excited are you? I'm really excited. And a bit like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, our couple kick off from Kent, the Garden of England. Post houses and all. Have you ever been in a car like this? Not whilst it was moving. No. <laughs> Today we present the fusion of delightful debutant Stephanie Connell <laughs> and venerable veteran Charlie Ross. Oh, gosh, we're going backwards, matron. Hold on. Handbrake. Oh, dear. Look left. Oh, we're all right. All clear. Yes, clear left, Charlie. I was hairy. It's... Don't worry, Steph. You'll calm down eventually. Who is your dream road tripper to be with? It's you. Don't be silly. You're just saying that no, because I'm, I'm not. driving. No, I'm not saying it. It's true. It's you. Crikey, I didn't see that coming. Steph from Surrey specialises in entertainment memorabilia. Who doesn't like games? She started out collecting stamps and became an auctioneer at the Mighty Bonhams before deciding to pursue a career as a dealer. Oh, that's nice. Steph's also a real film buff. No Star Wars, no Batman. Who loves the golden age of Hollywood. Oops! One for the bloomer reel. What's your favourite film? Probably Kind Hearts and Coronet. Oh, wonderful. Old, um, Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness. Did he play about eight different yeah. people? Yeah, all the family. Auctioneer Charlie is, of course, playing himself. Likewise, their 1963 Hillman Super Minx. It's a good roomy car, this one. We had three kids between us. We could put them on the back seat. We just sort of fill it with antiques instead. Good answer, Steph. You know the rules, do you? Ooh, I think we get £200... We do. ..to buy what we like... Yeah. ..and then we have to take them to auction. I think she's ready. <laughs> Our pair will set out from Sevenoaks with every intention of seeing an awful lot of Kent before taking the route both north and west, journeying through the Cotswolds and visiting Wales, then heading back east to finally finish up in Leicestershire at the delightful town of Market Harborough. Today, we'll say, that's all, folks, after an auction in Folkestone. But we start out in the aforementioned town of Sevenoaks. Well, Steph, I've got some antiques to buy, so look after my little minxie. I'm going shopping. So, while Steph moves on, somewhat gingerly... All clear. <laughs> Off you go. It's a bit hairy. Like the music, <laughs> Seven Oaks is the home of Roto Sound Strings, heard on the tunes of many great bands, and especially the Who. Groovy, or what? I mean, the music, not Charlie. Aha! It must be Mark. It is. Good to meet you, Charlie. Yeah, lovely to see you too. Thank Joe. you very much for having me to this fabulous part of the world. Fabulous shop too, Charlie. Quite a bit of it beyond your budget, though, like that. This is a classic Art Deco cocktail shaker, made of Bakelite and silver plate. And the thing I like about the luxury ones are the recipes are on here. So you turn the top, do you know what's in a Manhattan? Rye, Italian vermouth, Angostura bitters, maraschino and ice. That is a classic statement of the Art Deco period and I love it. It's £680 and I'm not surprised, but unfortunately the budget will not allow it. A little bit further into the trip and you might have had the funds, eh, Charlie? Now, what's he seen? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I recognise this. Maxime's, one of the most famous restaurants in Paris. And this is an old menu. And Maxime's was featured in Franz Lehar's wonderful opera, The Merry Widow. 
You'll meet me at Maxine's, where all the girls are dreams. You'll always feel much better for meeting Les Grisetta. And that's the names of all the Grisettas who then dance the famous Cancan dance. Da 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 in their frilly skirt. It's wonderful. But can can you afford it? <laughs> Mark? What's the story behind that? Well, that was given to a friend of mine yeah. in Barbados. It was uh, Michael Winners. No. The late film director and restaurant critic. And they were neighbours. And, and they gave it to you. And I, well, no, they didn't give it to me. I, oh, I did actually buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us nicely to... I'd quite like to buy it if it was ever so cheap. We're looking at 90 quid. Are you? If I said I'd love to pay 30 quid for it, does it... What about any 40 good? quid? It wipes uh, its face for me, then. Does it? If it wipes its face for you, who am I to argue? <laughs> I'll buy it because I love it. First blow to Charlie. Now, let's catch up with his young rival. Oh, someone driving around on a classic motorbike. There we go. Think it was a triumph. Don't mind that. How's the Minx? It's a, such a lovely car, and the sound of the engine just purring. Um, but I'm not adept at driving a classic car, obviously, as it is my first time, so I'm a bit in and out of the gears. Oops, Steph's off to her first shop in Wateringbury, where the stream of that name once powered three watermills, popular with amorous swans. Oh, sweet. And today, where Steph takes her very first road trip dip, so to speak. Let's get hunting. Let's. £200 to spend. But you know that. I really like this vase. I think it's probably Scandinavian, 1960s, and this kind of nice sort of citrine kind of colour. Very fashionable, really practical, and really nice. £16, which is a good, a good price for it, but as it's quite modern, I'm not going to go for it. I like it. The woman has principles. So ladders are very popular at the minute from a design point of view rather than an antiques point of view. £55, though. A lot for steps. The design's kind of reminiscent of a, of a biplane. And I know there was a maker of steps like this called Hathley, who made steps that were supposed to improve your servant's working day. Thought, but they're nice. All very promising. Now, with her Charlie, back in Seven Oaks. He's already bought that menu. Anything else? Right, look at this. Nothing really, is it? What is it? Where does it come from? Well, it's a headrest, or better still, a neck rest, and it's African. It's probably 100 years old, no more than that. I've seen them make a lot of money. I've seen them make no money. And you know me, I love a gamble. Mark? Charlie. Oh. <laughs> Hope you weren't listening. <laughs> now. It's a head or neck rest, isn't it? It's a neck rest, and, yes. And it's African. Can you tell me any more about that? It's uh, an Ethiopian piece, mainly for women. Yeah. Maybe because of the scowl. For the, when they did these elaborate head do's, yeah. it would keep them off the ground when they was uh, sleeping. Something I wouldn't need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old is it? 1910, 1920? I mean, uh, I'm asking... It's quite fun. 65 Are pounds. you? Tell me what you'd be happy paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to ask that question, I can tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'd be happy paying for, it'd be 20 yeah. quid. But, you know, I know. Make it 25 and it's yours. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll have a go at it. And it's a yours. bit of social history. Absolutely, yeah. Done deal, then, for two items. £65? Pounds. 65 yeah. So, with Charlie taking his leave... Well, I'm going to have a little bit of lunch, then I'm going to have a sleep. Thanks for that. What's up, watering Bree? Where Steph has those steps on her wish list. Aesthetic movement. By 1880. So the aesthetic movement's like a late 19th century design movement, similar to the arts and crafts, inspired very much by Asia and the new kind of available Japanese artworks that they'd never been seen before because you weren't able to import and export out of Japan. People like Christopher Dresser bringing those ideas over. So it's very much inspired by that in bamboo, but it's pretty. Ah, something she saw in the window earlier. It's this woodworking plane. I don't know a great deal about 
woodworking tools, but I know certain planes can make over a thousand pounds. So I'm going to take a punt that it's interesting and take it to auction and see what happens. I think dealer Jackie can look forward to some plain speaking. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Jackie. Hi. Now, I don't know anything about it, but I know the market for woodworking tools is pretty hot at the minute, especially yes. planes. So I'm going to take the plane, if that's OK. Great. Um, and it's, a, you know, it's £10, so that, you know, there's no haggling at £10. I'm also interested in the aesthetic movement table yes. and the ladder. Okay. So could you tell me what your best prices are? I can do a good price on the ladder. It's 55 at the moment. Yep. Uh, you can have that for 30 OK, yeah. Um, and what would you like to offer on the table? I think it's 60 at the moment. I was thinking about 35. That'd be great. Yeah, all yeah. right. Well, then I'll take all of them. Lovely. Thanks very much. So, three items for a grand total of... £75. Pounds. Please, that's lovely. And Steph's made brisk work of that. So, while she stows it all away, we'll catch up with Charlie down at the farm. Alexander! Alexander! I'm over here. Our auctioneer is taking the afternoon off from shopping to visit a plantation near the village of St Mary's Platt and crack that yummy Kent speciality, the cob nut. Very nice with port. In the company of nut grower Alexander Hunt. Ah! Charlie, very nice to meet Lovely you. Lovely to meet you too. Yeah. It's splendid being here. How many acres do you have here? We've got about eight acres here yeah. at Potash Farm. And these are all Kent cob planted in about 1900. So I'm surrounded by genuine antiques. You I'm... are. 120 odd years or thereabouts. Wonderful. And we're still picking commercially about a tonne and a half of nuts to the acre here. Right. All these years on from planting. It's pretty labour intensive, isn't it? Well, we've got the same three families that have been with me nearly 30 years. Really? and a bit of a race between us and the squirrels, as you can oh, imagine. No. <laughs> <laughs> the cob nut, which was originally cultivated from the wild hazel nuts of the hedgerow, has been a nutritious staple of the British diet for a very long time. They were first recorded by a Neolithic man. Good grief, thousands of years thousands ago. Thousands of years ago as a very early form of protein. And, of course, um, they could store them for several years, yeah. as indeed we can. Right. And there are a few cob nuts oh. from last year yeah. which are brown and much sweeter and drier yes. than the lovely fresh green cob nuts that I'm just picking off the tree there. Yeah. Look at the difference between the two. You're extraordinary, and presumably a great difference in taste. Great difference. I mean, there's a huge market for the fresh green cob nut. Really? And then they gradually become golden yep. and the nutty brown, yes. and then we can store the nuts for several years just in shell. After a long period of decline, during which many orchards were lost, one of Kent's finest is in demand again. They're especially good in Southeast Asian dishes, for example. Plus, the versatile cob nut can be used for everything from cooking oil to cosmetics. But it's still a very long way from the nut's Victorian heyday. They had a very big commercial use really? right up until the sort of 1930s yeah. uh, when cob nuts were taken by their truckload by rail yeah. to the cotton and woolen centres of the Midlands and the North. Right. And they were used in the process of dyeing um, the camouflaged uniforms in both world wars. So the cob nut played really quite a part in the wars. Kent's cod nuts, together with the county's much more famous crop, once attracted hordes of pickers down from London for a harvesting holiday. In this parish, uh, cob nuts and hops were the two main horticultural crops grown. Yeah. And there would have been hundreds, if not thousands, of people employed really? for the picking of those two crops in August, September and October. Right, right. Is it true they were called nutters? Very much so. And uh, you're uh, being a nutter yourself this <laughs> afternoon. Alexander, I've been a nutter for some time. <laughs> They're the finest nut in the world. You know, I'm beginning to agree with you. Well, Alexander, I've always been a salted peanut man myself, but I have to say, I am now a nutter. Cheers. <laughs> As if that was ever in doubt. <laughs> now, what about Steph and the mink? Ooh, hang on. Norn seems to have her family in hand whilst taking our route towards Goudhurst, on the edge of the beautiful Kent Weald. Ah, she blows! 
landed on her pink pumps, do we think? Hmm. With £125 left to spend. I'm in love with this dresser. So, really good antiques like this, it's what the current market is looking for. It's very early Georgian, but it has the original paint. Um, it's got that distressed look. It's not overly large. It's practical, but it's a proper antique. It's out of my price range, unfortunately, £950, but it's worth every penny, in my opinion. Mine too. What about that? Very good value for money. For £55, it's a 1930s walnut standard lamp. People would often pay way more than that for a standard lamp. You've got something that's got lovely patina. It's been pat tested, so that means it's been electrical tested for safety, which means legally it's ready to go, so you can basically buy it, take it home and use it. PAT stands for Portable Appliance Testing. Not quite found what she wants, though, has she? Useful items, they're three leather-covered jewellery case boxes, early to mid 20th century. Uh, but if you look inside, the quality is really nice. So this one lined with watered silk, these ones lined with silk and velvet. I'm not interested in this one as much because it hasn't got the individual compartments and it's a little bit large, but these two I am interested in. William, is it possible to speak to you about Sure. Them? Oh, hello. So this one is priced at 75 and this one is priced at 38. What would be your best prices for them? Uh, together, £90. What would be the best price for this one individually? £30. I think I would like to take the one for okay. £30. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. And with that little purchase, the heavy lifting's done for a while. Have you had a lovely first ever day on the yeah, road trip? Yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I'm in love with Kent. Should we stay here? Let's stay. We won't go any further. But we've got a map and everything. Anyway, night night. Next day, the wet weather doesn't seem to have dampened the mood in the minks. Actually, it does remind me of a film. And, of course, you being a film buff, what am I thinking of? Um, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg? Hello, High Water? You're thinking of Singing in the Rain. I am! I'm singing in the rain. Here we go. Just singing in the rain. The sun's in, in my sky. heart. I'm, I'm ready for love. love. That's my favourite line. Yeah. He said, driving into the ditch. <laughs> Yesterday, Charlie bought an Ethiopian headrest and a menu, which once belonged to a famous film director. I bet Michael Winner ate at Maxims a few oh, times. I bet, yeah. Leaving him with £135 to spend today. While Steph picked up a plane, a jewellery box, a stepladder, and a bamboo table. It's pretty. So she has just under 100 still available, should she see fit to spend it. Could you make the windscreen wipers go, please? That's my girl. Later, they'll be back in Kent for an auction in Folkestone. But our first stop today is in East Sussex at Rye. The ancient Sank port on the edge of Romney Marsh, popular with both smugglers and artists where Charlie, having already dropped Steph off, has an appointment on the quay. What a glorious day for antique hunting. Yes, it's turned out nice, hasn't it? Greetings. Is it Norman? It is indeed. Oh, well, lovely to, nice see, to you. see you. He's still got £135 to spend, remember? He's fun. I like him. Yeah, he's quite sweet. He's got his original pads on him, hasn't yeah. he? Mark you, he's, he's a post-war bear. Got a little bit of a bit hump. Of a shape, yeah. Bit got, of a yeah, got a bit of shape to him. Do you know what I like about this? The eyes. Do you? Yes. The drawing pins on. <laughs> That's a rat. <laughs> sure. Oh, and he did it yesterday. <laughs> I think it's beautifully done. Of course, I'm of the age that remembers Sooty on television. Busy, busy. Let's get busy. Thirty-five pounds. Well, I think the price is a bit fixed. I know, it's, uh, it's very underpriced. I made a mistake <laughs> there. I saw you coming. You I think he may be smitten with Ted. One for the collectors, not the kids, though. It's very vintage. It's very vintage. It's... I want something that's genuinely an antique. Victorian will do, but Georgian would be better. What about maritime? Rye's pretty salty and the cell room's very close to the seaside. Ah, 
another boat, a pond yacht. I'm not sure on a stand whether it's actually sailable. Sailable. <laughs> Get it? They need to be about twice as long uh, and not have a hole in the hull. <laughs> That's a bit of an advantage. Aye, aye, Captain. Amplifiers, radios. There's a Bakelite radio there. They're quite collectible. They're very collectible. They're better in cream than in brown, I think. But there's one there, an old bush radio. Now, that's the sort of radio my parents would have listened to. It's got all the wonderful uh, radio stations on it. Here we go. BBC Light programme. It's got Reykjavik on there, which is jolly handy, and Moscow. So you could just imagine turning that on and listening to Alva Liddell reading the news. Here it is the BBC home programme. Ask your dad. He's awfully nostalgic today. The front is lovely and in good condition. It's a shame most of the innards are missing. I'm afraid that is a no-go. Oh, well, there's always you-know-who. No, well, I can't see anything else I'm particularly no. in love with other than your small teddy bear. Oh, right. With the authentic drawing yeah, pin yeah. eyes. They could be old right. drawing pins, of they course. Could be, they, they might be older than the teddy bear. <laughs> When, did, when was the drawing pin invented? Whew. Now, that's a good question. It is. Mid-18th century, apparently. Gird your loins. I'm going to make you a miserable offer for your Just a minute. Okay, right, your I'm ready. <laughs> you got your hanky out? <laughs> yes, I'm... Uh, I'll tell you what, you probably need one for each <laughs> eye. <laughs> I think that will, with any luck, will make 20 quid at auction. Will it be? So, well, I think it probably will. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Stretcher bearers. <laughs> This one? And, uh, yes. So that means... No, no, I want to pay a tenner for it. I'll really? be perfectly honest, I'm not going to beat about the bush. <laughs> I think we can squeeze that. Can you? Yeah, I feel sorry for... You're him. a gentleman, you feel sorry for Thank him. You. Thanks, Norman. Ten pounds for him. Thank, Thank you. Much. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, look at that. Yeah! So, while Charlie and furry friend apart, oh. make sure he's got his belt on. Come on, Teddy. What about Steph? Well, making sensible use of local transport, it seems, in the Kent town of New Romney, where she's come to take a ride on what was once the world's smallest public railway. Hello. Hello, I'm nice Steph. To meet you. Please yeah. meet you, you dummy. Yeah. The Romney Hythe and Dim Church might be a mere 15 inch gauge, but it was conceived and built as a proper line to carry passengers and goods and not just a tourist attraction. Just ask the general manager, eh? Stanley, how did it come about? Well, two guys who were into motor racing, they were into model steam railways, and they decided that they would build the best railway system that the world had ever seen. Those two founders were the racing drivers, Captain Jack Howie and his friend, Count Louis Zavrovsky, the man who drove the original Chitty Chitty Bang Bang cars. The Count had already built a 15-inch gauge railway in the grounds of his Kent mansion and was about to bankroll the new project when, in 1924, he died at the Italian Grand Prix. And then Captain Jack Howie really made it his life's mission that he was going to complete what he and his friend had set out to do. And he spent the rest of his life here at New Romney uh, owning, managing and developing the railway. I've lost my friend. I yeah. really will make this happen. The new railway opened in 1927 and was an immediate success. So Howie soon set about extending it a further five miles to the lighthouse at Dungeness, making the line almost 14 miles long and requiring nine locomotives to carry the booming passenger numbers. All of the originals, with their evocative names, are still in use today. Danny, I understand that this was the only way for commuters to get into Hyde. Well, that's right. This, this whole area was very sparsely populated. There wasn't a regular bus service, so um, the railway was the way, so that genuinely people could you know, go about their normal business. And we were still operating school services until two or three years ago for up to 150 children oh my at one time. That required the railway to always be available because we never wanted the school to not have its students in. Yeah. When the war broke out in 1939, this part of the coast was in the front line and the railway certainly played its part. There was even an armoured train. 
This, in fact, is the locomotive that was part of the armoured train. Oh, Obviously wow. covered in plates then and with a vehicle either side of it which carried the army personnel and they would ride in it and claim to have shot down a plane or two. But really the important thing was it gave confidence to the people who were running the railway that they had some protection. Now all aboard, Steph. Time to get your uniform on. Bid farewell to Danny. Bye. Nice to meet you, Steph. And say hello to driver Ian. It's so loud when you're in here. I wonder if she has her favourite train movie, The Railway Children, The Lady Vanishes, perhaps, or 310 to Yuma. How fast are we going now? About eight miles an hour. Eight miles an hour? Oh, my gosh, at 20, it must feel like it's a five. Oh, we're going to have 20, don't worry. Meanwhile, in Dimchurch, have I got grit in my eye, or is that Trevor Howard? Steph! Steph! Oh, Lordy, it's only been a few hours. Trains can have that effect, even little ones. I've been driving a train. How very, very it exciting. It was the most exciting thing ever. Ever? Oh, but more exciting flowers. than my flowers? Uh, yeah, probably a little bit more exciting than your flowers. Oh, that's very disappointing. <laughs> So, with our duo reunited, let's get back to the shops. Look what I've got for you. Kentish cob nuts covered in Belgian dark chocolate. Yes. Delicious. Thank you. A pleasure. Do you want to try one? What a good idea. Yeah, let's try one. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. Very oh. good. Anyway, when they're quite refreshed, they'll be arriving at the village of Appledore, next to the level crossing. More trains. Antiques. Steph has £95 left to spend and Charlie a wee bit more. Right, right. ladies first. £125. Meet Anthony and Val. Hello. Hello. Mr Ross. Oh, Mr Ross. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, your reputation precedes you, Charlie. Now, what'll it be for Madam and Sir? I want to buy an antique, but I don't want to lose money. Ah, uh, that old refrain. Well, that's certainly an antique. Very original. Georgian tollware. Tin, really. Spice box with a compartmental interior for all your spices. So you can put your mace and your other spices in here, and uh, you probably put your cinnamon sticks in the middle here, and it's seen age, it's 200 years old. Um, but it's not a Rolls-Royce one. The Rolls-Royce ones have lids to the compartment with the names of the spices on them. Uh, the price is £38. Look at that. It's got a maker's name. Now, this, of course, is going to mean absolutely nothing to me. H, L and Co, number 41. Well, they're obviously the finest spice box makers in the world. Hamilton, Laidlaw and Co of Glasgow. Unlikely. What's Steph up to? I've spotted an absolutely fabulous pair of candlesticks. They are £950, but they are gorgeous. And they're what is called Adam Revival. So they're in the style or inspired by the architect and designer Robert Adam, famous for his work on many English and British stately homes. They're very, very pretty, but these ones were made in 1910. Some pieces designed by Robert Adam can make a fortune. So he worked with Thomas Chippendale on some seriously important pieces of furniture. Robert Adam and Thomas Chippendale sofas can make over a million pounds each. But unfortunately, out of my price range. I'll put them back. With a heavy heart. Not that tricky sharing a shop, is it? Some people make such a fuss of it. This is more like it. Bit of military here. Oh, if only I had Paul Laidlaw in my pocket. He would be able to tell me all about this. I can tell you it's a swagger stick for use on the parade ground by the Sergeant Major. And we can tell what regiment it is if we look at the end. The Honourable Artillery Company. And there is their motif, which is a grenade. Actually, a pomegranate. The French call them grenades. Isn't that splendid? It's sadly not silver, it's silver plate, but it's the original top to the cane and I think the original ferrule, the bottom here, also in silver plate. And they're very collectible. 
for militaria dealers. You can just imagine the sergeant major on the parade ground, tucked under his arm. Come on, you horrible lot. You horrible lot. Lift right, lift right, lift right, lift right, lift right. 18, jump. Right. Let's go and see Val. Lift right, lift right, lift right, lift right, lift right. Charlie. <laughs> it's very scary. Look what I found. Oh, beautiful. But no price. 48. Oh. Have you got an owner that might be yeah. in? Could I phone him? You can, darling. And Mr Ross on the line for you, Tony. Tony. How are you? Charlie, well, you're not too bad at the moment. You're probably going to be a lot worse when you're speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love your swagger stick. I mean, I shouldn't be saying that, but it is. It's fabulous. The reason I'm speaking to you, I, I think it's priced up at over 40. Can you do anything on it for me? Like, <laughs> reduce the price? Yeah. This is, this is sounding promising. You'll sell it to me for what you paid for it. £25. I think that's so reasonable, I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to say, as you're such an honourable, honest chap like the Honourable Artillery Company, I will give you 28 for it. How's that? Thank you very much indeed. Very convivial. While I'm here, in the room at the back there, is a Georgian tollware spice box. Six, yes. seven compartments inside. Yeah. Um, not in great condition, but then neither Thanks. will I be when I'm 200 years old. No, darling. <laughs> It's got thirty-eight pounds on it. Twenty-eight. It's ten off. It's quite generous. That's very put them sweet together, of you. Maybe. Fifty-six pounds, I yes, owe you. Is that right? Yes, please. That's I shall pay you then, madam. Really? Over to Steph. Buy the shiny stuff. There's lots of interesting silver in this cabinet, but what's caught my eye is this set of silver teaspoons. Regency, they are because they're from 1813. They were created. Designed by a gentleman called William Welsh, or that's the hallmark on the back. They're Exeter silver, so you see a lot of silver from Birmingham or London or Chester, <laughs> but you don't necessarily see a lot of what we call provincial silver, in this case from Exeter. So I think they're interesting, they're usable, they're quite a nice, smart design. So people collect them because they collect the makers or they collect unusual places, but also you could buy them as a usable item, a good antique and a, and a relatively solid investment, really. So hopefully, if I took them to auction, they're bang on budget at £95, they'd be successful. Anthony, is it possible to talk to you about these spoons? Yes, of course, I'll come along over. Thank you. So it's this set of spoons here, Indeed. and I'd like to know what the best price on them is. OK, knowing uh, this dealer, I would think he would do those for £80. That would be his very best. OK, so I'll take them. I think they're lovely. Super, Thanks thank you very, very much. much indeed. I'll get them wrapped up. So, with the cash paid? 70, 80. And spoons counted. Two. Allow me, madam. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, watch out, Bertie. You've still got Bertie. I think she means that Teddy. Already acquired a name. Oh. Off to the auction. He looks excited, doesn't he? Don't forget the shut eye. Now, doesn't that just look glorious? Proper British seaside with sun. After setting out from Seven Oaks and staying mostly within the Garden of England, they finished up at Folkestone and Kent Auction Galleries with internet bidding and everything. You excited? Yeah, are you excited? I'm extremely excited, but I expect you're going to win. Oh, I'm sure you're going to win. Charlie parted with £131 for his five auction lots. What do you reckon, Steph? Charlie paid £40 for this, which I think is a bargain, and I wish I'd seen it. It's great. You've got film history, you've got Michael Winner's restaurant reviews. It's perfect. I would love to have bought this, but unfortunately I didn't see it. So good luck to Charlie. I think it'll probably make £60 to £80. Steph spent a bit more, £185, also for five lots. Well, Steph, £30. I think that's about right for these steps. They're quite well made. I think they're probably late 19th century. They're in amazing condition. I think they're for picking apples. After all, we're in Kent. Apple trees don't grow very high. And, of course, if you walked up here, you could uh, pick your apples. Steady, Charlie. Now, what does cell room manager David Lance feel make of their lot? The teddy bear, yes. He's got a sad look about him. He doesn't even squeak. <laughs> he said six silver teaspoons, good condition. Exeter, 
nice rare mark. Now Maxim's Mania, that's the one I like the best. Edward the Seventh used to go there, Bridget Bardo, Cary Grant. Looks like there may be a film star in this auction. Oh, oh it's only them. Steph's debut. Beginning with her little box, out of the hammer of auctioneer Melissa Turner. Come on. This is your first lot. Shall I hold your hand? Start off with this one then at uh, just ten pounds here. Looking for oh, yeah, no, no, it doesn't matter where you start. Twenty minutes at twelve. Twenty minutes at twelve pounds online. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty with me. Twenty-two, twenty-five. I'm looking for any bids at twenty-five. Come on. Twenty-five team. pounds. Anyone any bids for at twenty-five? Steph. Twenty-eight. Looking for thirty. Thirty pounds. Anyone any bids at thirty? Thirty anywhere? Thirty. Thirty-two. 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 Anyone any bids at thirty-two pounds? Thirty-two pounds. Anyone any bids at thirty-two? Not bad. Not bad. Thirty-two. Not bad. One more. Lovely. Thank you. Thirty-five. Oh, come on, come on. Thirty-eight now. Forty. No bids at 40, I'll sell at £38. Oh, well done. Sneaky bit profit, thank well you. Well done. Yes, we've had worse starts than that, Steph, believe me. That is a little bit of profit, take the commission off that. Yeah, be all right. Charlie's swagger stick is next. Attention! £10, thank you. 12, 15, 18, 20, 22, 25. Nope. 25. 25 online, 28, 30. Online. Come on, come on, this is too cheap. 32, 35. Yeah, that's better. Profit. Yeah, but it needs to be 38, more. 38, 40. No beds at 40, 40, 42, 45, 48. Matron, 30, matron, we're taking off. 55. We're taking off. <laughs> 60, 65, 65, anywhere else. I love it. <laughs> oh, this auction here. <laughs> One happy chappy, 65 anywhere else. No, oh, 60, 65. Double your money. Well done, then it's 60. Yeah, well done. Yeah. I thank you. Yes, yeah, splendid start, Sergeant Major. I thank you on behalf of the Honourable Artillery <laughs> Company. Now, Steph's biggest buy. Start off with this one then at just thirty pounds. Thirty pounds anywhere near thirty. Thirty Come pounds on. anywhere. Thirty under oh, thirty-two online. Thirty-five. Thirty-eight. I'm after. Any bids at thirty-eight? Forty now. Forty-two. Forty-five. Forty-five in the room. Looking for forty-eight. Forty-eight pounds anywhere near bids at forty-eight. Fifty. Fifty pounds. Fifty in the room. Fifty-five. I'm looking for now. Fifty-five. Fifty-five and sixty. Sixty pounds online now. Sixty-five. Yes. Look, you see, I've totally gone online. Now any bids at seventy. £70, pounds, anyone who bids at £70, pounds, £70, pounds, anyone who bids at £70. 70 is what I'm after. You're nearly there, there, Steph. In the room at £65, pounds, last chance to bid now. <laughs> That's a shame. Just fell short. I take my hat off to you for buying a proper <laughs> Charlie's Spice Tin. Hot or not? Start off with this one then. At just £10, £10 pounds oh, only, on, and he bids on. at £10. Ten come pounds on. only when he bids at £10. Come 10 on, online, team. 12 in the room, 15 come I'm after. Let's have some 15 money. pounds online, 18. Come on, room. spice. Spice it up. 20 online. 22, 25 now, and he bids at 25. Wait, wait, nearly. Spice up your life. 30. Spice Too late to spice up my life. <laughs> 38. 40 anywhere, any bits of 40, 42. What's in profit? It's a profit, you watch it. Anywhere, any bits of 45, 45, any more, 45. Oh, you're in good profit. 48 is where we're at, 50 is the next bid. Any bits at 50, no bits at 50, we'll sell at 48 pounds. That's I'm amazing. With that. I'm happy with that. And so you should be, Charlie. I think that you were was worried tremendous. about that lot. Yeah. I was, that was my worried lot. Yeah. Yours worried of Bucknell. Steph's plane. Will it take off? Start off with this one then. At, not in uh, the sale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just just eight pounds. Oh. Come on, it's cheap. Oh, Big doughy brown cheap. eyes there begging. <laughs> not mine there. Thank you. There we go. Look, there you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ten, twelve. It's flying. Fifteen. 18. 18 is what I'm looking for. Any bids there? No bids at 18. I'm selling at 15. 15, 15 pounds. Just what the doctor ordered. That's it's good. Profit. It's a profit. Don't you worry. Never turn your nose up no, on a profit. I won't. Your Ethiopian headrest is next, Charlie. Start off with this one then at 22 pounds. 22 oh, she's 22 bids. Oh, come on. 25 pounds. Any bids at 25? I'm losing money. No bids at 25. I'll sell at 22. Oh, someone's not happy with me. No, no. <laughs> no I'm 25. thrilled to bits with you, my dear. <laughs> His first disappointment. Oh, that was a shame. Come on, pickers of Kent. These are good for apples, hops, or cob nuts. 15, anyone who bids at 15? 15. 15 what do you think? Everybody needs a step, come on. 
<laughs> Thank you. 18 now. 18 oh. Tiffany, when bids at 18? 18, 20. Looking for 22. 25. 28, I'm after now. Any bids at 28? 28. Oh, come on, a little bit more. 28 pounds, 28. 30. 32 now. 32 They're great for books. 32. <laughs> 32. 35. 35 in the room, 38. I'm after. Oh, bids at 38. Any bids at 38. Currently in the room, 38. 40 now. Oh, 40. Any bids at 40. 38 on mine then. Looking for 40 elsewhere. Oh, oh, yeah. It's all right. It's profit, it's profit, it's profit. Yes, tiny steps. That's how it starts. Life. I'm happy. What? Bertie's turn. Just look at that piercing stare. Start off with this one then at 15, 20, 20 pounds. Ooh. 22, 25, 28, 30, 32, 35, 38, 40, 45. He's 40, on a 60, run. 45. 45 pounds, anyone who bids at 45. 45 pounds, anyone who bids at 45 pounds. 45 pounds, anyone who bids at 45. 45, we've got 40 in the room. Go ahead, come on, come on. 42 in the room, 45, 48. 48 in the room, looking for 50. This is nearly 50 a 50 pound teddy bear. 50 pounds, anyone who bids at 50. Has he got a name? Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Bertie as was. 50 pounds elsewhere. Any bits of 50. Oh, well done. That's amazing. I know. I am rather, aren't I? What's my name, though? It's a bargain. Bargain bear. Steph's last lot. A slightly tatty old bamboo. Start off with this one then at just eight pounds. Eight pounds. Oh, eight pounds. That's far too much. Eight pounds only, and it needs a little bit of care. <laughs> a little bit of TLC, this one. <laughs> Don't we all, dear? <laughs> Thank you, there we go. Someone's come to your rescue. Eight pounds. <laughs> Ten, <laughs> anywhere else? Thank you, kind people. <laughs> Ten, twelve. Oh. Fifteen. It's flying. Oh, it's flying. Eighteen. Away. Twenty. No, twenty anywhere else. Any bits of twenty. It's the damage, Steph, it's the damage. All done then at 18 pounds, too. Good luck. <laughs> Just needs a bit of TLC, like us all. Now, finally, we have Charlie's much fancied menu parisienne. Let's start off this at 50 pounds. 50 pounds, if you may. Any bids at 50? 50 is what we're looking for. Any bids at 50 pounds? 50, 50 pounds. Anyone any bids at 50? 50 is what we're looking for. 45, 45, 45. Anyone any bids at 45 in the room? Looking for 50, 55, 60, 65. 70. 70 anywhere else? Any bids at 70 pounds? 70 pounds anywhere? Any bids at 70? 70 is what I'm looking for. Any bids it's at not bad. No, it's good. I'm after any bids at 70. 70. No bids at 70. I will sell at 65. Last chance to bid now. Yeah, even if you take commission off that. Yeah, it's a good profit. Well, well done, done you. All right. Yeah, well done you. He's got the winner's glow about him, hasn't he? Well, that's it, Steve. How was your experience? It was great. All the better for sharing it with you. Oh. Maths time. Thank you very much. Steph started out with £200 and after auction costs, made a bit of a loss. So she now has £157 and 68p. Whilst Charlie, who began with the same sum, came away with a tidy profit, also after costs. So he's sitting pretty on £268 and 26 pence. Time for a quick tour of the harbour, you two. Is this an antiques boat trip now then? I think that's a new format. Yes, I think so too. Steph's definitely arrived, I think. <laughs>